Hello, my name is Irene Andrews and I'm here at So Easy today to show you the new range of paper pieces. We have hexagons in one and a half inch, two inch, two and a half inch and three and a half inch pre-cut shapes in packets of 100. We also have to complement the range, we have the template paper which can be used in conjunction with the hexagon templates and you can use your rotary cutter to cut out the shapes should you desire. I'm now going to show you how to um, attach the papers to the fabric. To um, lay our pe paper pieces out on our fabric so that we get the best use of our fabric and eliminate any wastage, lay your fabric down with the wrong side facing up and the selvage closest to you. Lay the papers down in a vertical row, take three papers to start with, and then take two papers and place them as such. Take another three papers, ensuring that you have a half inch seam allowance in between each paper. When you are satisfied in that honeycomb effect that you have, Take a fabric glue pen and place some glue on the back of the paper. Turn it over and press it against the back of the fabric. Keep going until you have all your papers in position. We're now ready to cut the um, fabric out. So um, if we go in between angling your scissors, use your fa fabric scissors, angling in between the paper pieces. First thing I'm going to do is show you how to tie a quilter's knot in the end of your thread. Thread your needle and draw the thread between your thumb and your forefinger so that the tail of the thread is facing towards your thumb. Place the needle over the thread at a 90 degree angle and place your thumb over the needle. Pick up the thread and wrap it twice around the point of the needle and then hold it securely with your thumb. Push the needle so that you can grasp it the other side and pull slowly through and you'll find that where you place the needle across the thread is exactly where your knot has formed. To um, attach your uh, fabric to your piece of paper, fold, have the, the paper facing towards you, fold in the middle of one of the sides and insert the needle into the back of the fabric so that the knot is on the back. When you come to the corner, fold the corner over and place the needle, taking it right through to the back, over the fold in the fabric. This secures the, the fold in the fabric and holds it firmly in position. Work your way around the shape, the paper shape, in this manner. Now I'm working today with the one and a half inch shape and I'm finding that one stitch back to the paper side is enough for that size shape. If I was working with a larger shape I might find that I might need to take more stitches on the straight edge. Always ensure that your needle is on the paper side when you fold the fabric and go through to the back 
that your thread is over the top and securing the folded fabric in position. And we're nearly back to the end, to where we started. And when you get back to the end, you've got a situation like this where you've started here. So flick with your thumb the fabric away from the paper, fold this one down and then flick that over so that you get the nice creased fold again. Place the needle in. So turn your uh, shape over, gently fold the piece of uh, fabric and paper over your middle finger come slightly in towards the centre, take a large stitch and then do another back stitch over the top of that. You can then cut the thread off. Doing um, your tacking and having your knot starting on the fabric side and your finish off on the fabric side will make it a lot easier to remove the papers later on because you'll be working from the right side. To attach these paper pieces to the center piece to make our portion of uh, grandma's flower garden, take an outside piece, place it over your center piece so I've taken the two pieces, place them one on top of the other, making sure that I line them up perfectly. I've got my black thread here because my black thread is my darkest fabric. I'm going to slide in here and angle the needle so that it comes out right on that point. I like to take a little um, stitch right on the corner and do another stitch over the top of that. A thimble is very handy when you're doing this um, because you're going through um, several thicknesses. When you're doing these whip stitches to hold the shapes together what you're wanting to do is to just catch a couple of threads from each fabric shape. Continue, take smallish stitches, as the smaller the better. It looks neater from the other side when we open the shape up. When you get to the very end, I like to do two stitches right over the very corner. We don't need to cut our thread to add the next shape because we're going to continue around this hexagon shape. So pick up your next piece, position it over the centre piece, take two stitches right in the very corner. You need to continue around the shape until you have all six pieces attached to the centre shape. When you have all your outer shapes connected to your inner shape, you need to then sew from the centre always to the outside to join the outer shapes. You achieve that by folding the centre shape in half, match the outer shapes together, slide in with your needle, bringing the point out at the corner, do uh, two stitches to hold it securely in position and then continue along doing your whip stitch over the two shapes making sure that you only collect with each bite of the needle only uh, takes two to three threads of each fabric shape. Continue with your whip stitch until you get to the end of the shape. When you get to the end of the shape, take two stitches right into the very pointed corner. The second stitch, we're going to put the needle through the loop and that locks the stitches off. 
and then we're going to bury the needle and the thread into the seam allowance on the back and then snip it off. When we've uh, continued sewing all our lines going to the outside, this is uh, what your shape ends up like. Um, there it is on the back showing you that um, it's all connected and all the stitching. By using the same colour thread you and taking being careful and only taking your two to three threads with each shape, you don't see any stitching in between. So when you have decided which uh, design you would like to place your shapes into, you take some connected shapes, and I have some here in a background fabric. You can place those in between your shapes to see what your finished design is going to look like. I would then sew those three pieces together to give me a stable piece so that I can join to this larger piece here. To remove the uh, papers when you have finished, all you need to do is, you can do it just with a pin, is to loop it in under your stitches your tacking stitches and because we started from this side it's easy to remove the thread then turn it over and the paper just pops out. When we've uh, selected our design we use connector shapes to hold our design elements together. I've made this a small quilt here using um, the one and a half inch shapes and you can see where I've used all the connector shapes to give definition to these shapes here. I've started with this beautiful fabric that has a, a range of buttons on it and I've used the button fabric as my centerpiece for each uh, shape and this was a wonderful fabric to use because it had so many colours in, in it that I got a, a really good range of shapes and colours from that one fabric. I've, when I put this all together I cut off the, the sides of the hexagons because I wanted that to stay flush with the border fabric. You can, if you like, um, add uh, shapes around the outside that and retain your hexagon shapes and then applique your shapes onto your border fabric. If you do that, uh, your uh, hexagon shapes will be proud and stand out from your border fabric.